So feel free to ask questions if you like. I'll be happy to, to talk about it if I'm able to. Okay, so having said that, I'm gonna play some music.
So that's a um, piece uh, I wrote for, it's called Freewheeler for Kenny. Kenny Wheeler is a, was a great jazz musician, a flugelhorn player, composer, band leader, and uh, was very influential on me when I was coming up and over the years. And I actually got to meet him and play with him a little bit at a jazz workshop I went to in Canada in 1985. Um, something I spent a month at in, in Banff. They have a yearly jazz workshop for a month. And so I, I got, actually got to meet him and play some of his tunes with him. And, and uh, so again, he had a big influence on me. He passed away a couple years ago, and I wrote that uh, suite. It's two, two parts, as you can tell, uh, but joined together by some common harmonic things and transition. It's common, common harmonic material, kind of. So. Do you do any uh, song writing? I'm sorry? Song writing? Do you do any songs? You mean like okay. words? Um, uh, not. Not really. I mean, I've written a few, but not. I don't, it's not something I pursue that much. But I've written a couple of songs. <laughs> Jazzy also. What's that? Jazz. Jazzy songs. Actually, one I wrote was a country song, country. which you would probably get a kick out if I could sing it. But I, but you don't want to hear me sing, so I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> it's called. Uh, what's it called? Uh, it's called to justify my existence. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so yes. Where do the shifts come from? The what? The shifts in tone and emotion. I mean, are they coming from emotion? Are they when you create like that? Uh, you mean when I'm playing or when I'm writing or? When you're writing, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure how if I can answer it. Uh, I just, I mean, when I write something, I mean, I intentionally wrote that as a as a tribute to him, right? So I was thinking about that, and uh, uh, you know, it, it took, a, actually this is, sometimes I sit down and write something in one one go, like an hour, hour and a half sometimes, you know, this one took a, a week at least, maybe a couple weeks. And uh, and I, I was just thinking, I don't, I don't remember so much emotionally, I just remember thinking like, I wanna write something a little different here, different from what I usually write, and I wanted to, I want the melody to be shaped differently, and I was actually thinking about the way he plays and the way he writes when I wrote that. So it's sort of in the style of something I might hear him play or write. So I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but well, no, I, just, I, just, well, no, you did. I, I think the emotional part. I think the emotional part comes in when you're performing. Actually, you know, I think that's. I mean, when you're writing something, I mean, I'm not really. I don't. I don't think I'm really feeling. I mean, I know it's going to be a vehicle for some kind of expression. So maybe I'm setting up something for a certain kind of expression. But it, I don't feel like I'm necessarily going through that emotion while I'm while I'm writing it. Does that make sense? But when I'm playing it, that's when it, you know, if, if it's a good day <laughs> and you can you can go there, then that's when that manifests. I think the emotional part. So, Thank you. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions. Actually, in fact, I like having a discussion about this stuff. Okay. Um, so I'm going to play some something new that I wrote. Uh, this one's a little more. Uh, Mm. Lighter, you could call it lighter, I guess. And uh, and I wrote this with something in mind too. Um, I like Brazilian music, and uh, I love Brazilian music actually. And uh, I wanted to write something. And I've written tunes that are Brazilian, Brazilian influenced, uh, like samba, bossa nova. But I wanted to write something that was like almost like that would sound like like a, one of my Brazilian composer heroes would would write something like that. You know, not copying, but but sort of in that style. This is a, a samba, and I'm call, for now I call it sun song. But uh, I write a lot of tunes that are sort of minor key sounding, like sort of dark and, and you know ominous a little bit sometimes, or sort of tinged, like you know a little sad, sad sounding or thoughtful if you want to call it that. But I wanted to write something that wasn't quite so dark, more like a happy samba. Not happy is not the word, but you know like a joyful thing. So I thought, well, a sun song is good, right? So it is emotions. <laughs> it is, sure it is. It is, it is but, I mean, but that doesn't mean, yeah. I mean, I, I think, but I, I, it's a good question. I mean, I think, like I said, I think what I'm thinking about is when I'm writing it, whether I'm feeling that or not, I think it's, I'm setting up, writing something that when I play it, then it'll have that feeling to it. Yeah. Does that make sense? But kind of the way I wrote this one is I just felt my way through it, so maybe it is a matter of exploring, sort, sort of exploring it emotionally as well, you know. Yeah. Anyway, I hope, this, hope you like this one. This is kind of a simple song, really. 
it's, uh, it's sort of in the vein of uh, one of my heroes, Antonio Carlos Jobim, who wrote a lot of, uh, was a really famous Brazilian uh, musician and composer, and uh, kind of helped introduce Brazilian music to jazz, which now Brazilian music is just a huge part of jazz. It's like part of the language. So, anyway.
Nobody's danced? Nobody got up and danced? I know. <laughs> you, must, you must feel the emotions from the people who listen to you, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, yeah that's, that. I mean, that's a big part of, of uh, performing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I go play in the hotel, you know, and, and I'm just sitting there and nobody's there or nobody I can tell and nobody's listening. And it's uh, just sort of it's hard to play, actually, you know. Yeah. And all I need is one person to, I notice, I look around, I'll watch, and I'll see uh, one person, I'll see, notice they're watching, and so I just play for that person, you know. <laughs> and then, you know, and then uh, sometimes I have, sometimes I don't know people are paying attention and someone will come up and say something, oh, I really liked your music. I didn't know that they were even paying attention. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it helps to have an audience to li that's listening, you know, yeah. and that appreciate what you're doing. Absolutely. You ever heard of uh, Edmundo Ross? Who? Edmundo Ross. Uh, no, I don't he think so. He did the uh, playtime in Brazil as a samba. Type. Oh, okay. It dates oh. back to the 60s. Oh, nice. I try to Google it, I can't find it. So yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I don't, I'm sure you can find him if, he, if, he's, <laughs> if he's got the music out there. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to play something. Let's see. I'm going to play something in 3 4. I love also, another thing I like is uh, uh, playing in 3 4 different times. Like th I love playing waltzes or 3 4 time field songs. Yeah. Right? So, um, you can buy a tantrum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is actually a song I wrote a long time ago, but I, I really like playing this tune. And uh, it's just a waltz, but a jazz waltz. So I drink lots of water when I play. That's good. Anybody want a glass of water? I can bring a couple. That's not what I do. Just relax. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, if anybody needs a break, just. Yeah. Oh, this is called Susie's Waltz.
Yes, sir. Where did it start? That? No, the jazz. Or your uh, for music. me? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a two part question. One yeah. is, where did your good question. journey start? Well, I mean, I, I grew up in a, a family that went, uh, my parents were both in church music, Southern Baptist church music. So my dad was in the Air Force. I sent you my podcast. You'll hear all the story. But my dad was in the Air Force. And so um, wherever we would go, they would find some Southern Baptist church that needed some help with the music. My dad would direct the choir and the singing, church singing, and my mom would play the piano. So I grew up with that music, basically you know, singing church music. I didn't ever really play that music for, in church. I was too shy as a kid to play in front of anybody. <laughs> but, uh, or you know, I... But, but my mom was really good at that kind of, uh, you know, accompaniment, leading a church. I mean, a whole church singing, playing the piano, and my dad up there directing everybody and singing, you know, and leading the choir. And so I started singing at an early age, and I sang. And I, my dad had me sing in the adult choir when I was 11, because I was there for all the rehearsals anyway. I knew all the music, you know. So um, I grew up doing that, and that's how I got into music. And I took piano lessons starting from the time I was eight years old. And I discovered jazz when I was about, I don't know, teens, 15, 16. Um, we moved back to Georgia, and my next door neighbor, my cousin lived next door, and he was getting into the jazz, like popular jazz of the day. Chuck, you probably remember Chuck Mangione, sure. Crusaders, um, people like that that were popular back at that time, you know, back before electricity, I, I say, you know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's, that's sort of how I got into it. I was looking for, I knew I wanted to play music, I just didn't know what it was. But I knew I was going to play music. I mean, there was really no other option, sort of, for me, you know. But uh, when I discovered jazz, when I found out what that was, then I was like, immediately, I was like, okay, that's now I know what I'm going to do. And I found myself a teacher, finally, after looking around for a while and started studying. And I started playing gigs professionally when I was 19. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. So, good question. So uh, that's, that's kind of how I got into it. I didn't grow up around jazz musicians or around that music, you know. I wish, I, in some ways, I wish I had. I remember looking back on it, a couple of encounters that I had that I had with jazz when I was younger, but I didn't know what it was. It was just like, kind of like one of those things, like, what was that? That was kind of cool. What was that? And but I didn't have any ref, frame of reference to pursue it, kind of. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, because like we grew up in you know stadium rock and roll. Yeah, sure. And it was right. like a religion. Though. Sure, yeah, sure. And, uh, so it's it's interesting to hear your story yeah. and go that direction. So. Yeah. And you know, my idea at the time was, I look, I saw it as, you know, I saw it as almost like a spiritual thing, you know? I mean, I saw it as like, I thought all musicians are, they, they, want, they want to be, they, they want the same thing I want, which is to, to take, the, like to play at the highest level that I can. Like I, I saw it almost like a, like a calling, of something, you know what I mean? And I came to find out that not everybody thinks that way, you know? But, uh, but I still think that way, you know? I think we should, you know, I think we should, um, uplift, uplift with our music, you know, and uh, express things that, uh, that are, I mean, they can be sad, but that's, that's not, a, that's not negative, you know, uh, I, I prefer, I guess, the word reflective instead of sad, maybe reflective, you know, um, I have people tell me all the time, people that like my music, one thing they always say is, your music is so relaxing, I think, well, that's, I mean, that's a great compliment, I think, you know, because not all the songs that I play, are, I, see, I don't see them as relaxing necessarily, especially when I play with my trio, it's pretty energetic. I mean, there's some pretty, I mean, we play some pretty energetic, high energy music, you know, but uh, I still think there's a core of that. I hope that that core of, of that is there. It is. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? I'll play another one. I yeah. just had a question. Uh, yeah, sure. Do you, you spend some time in Canada? Uh, just briefly. I, I was at Banff for a, a month uh, at the jazz workshop oh. in 1985. Um, I got a, I, it was a great, it was a great experience. I got to meet some of my heroes and, uh, you know, be around a lot of other young, great musicians. And, uh, and I've been in Canada a couple times touring with bands. I played in Toronto and I played in Calgary different times, you know, playing with bands. And I like uh, Diana Krall. She's a, uh, I like her jazz. Yeah, she's. A, I think she's a great piano player. I'm, I don't I'm, think yeah. she plays anymore. I haven't seen her. But yeah, I think she, she's around. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. She studied with one of my heroes. She studied piano with one of my heroes, actually, which is kind of cool. I actually hear it in her playing a little bit if I listen to her. Um, his name is Jimmy Rolls. He's one of my favorite pianists, jazz pianists, and he was her teacher. And I, I thought that was really interesting. So. <laughs> yeah. So.
Anything else? Any other questions? I'm happy to talk. I'll talk all day. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play. This is another tune I wrote for a, a friend of mine that, uh, that passed. Actually, he, this guy was actually a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do your thing. Um, this is a, and I just wrote this a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, this person is named Frank Kimbrough. He's from North Carolina, and I only I met him I met him actually uh, I guess back in like 2014 or 15. He uh, he's a, he, he's actually friends with my bass player and my trio, Ron. Uh, they're both from North Carolina, and uh, Ron and I Ron told me, oh Frank's coming down to his hometown in North Carolina to play a solo concert. I said, well let's go get some hotel rooms. Let's go over there. So we drove over there. I met him and got to hang out with him, and he's a great. He's just first time I heard his music, he just it just like resonated with me. I thought, you know, this is, I like the way this guy plays. I really like this, you know. And uh, so I started listening to his music and I actually got a, uh, I actually got a grant from my city, Greenville County, Greenville City uh, Arts Council to go to New York and study with him back in 2015. And I spent uh, a couple of long, you know, basically we hung out and talked about music. <laughs> but uh, he, he was teaching at Juilliard. So I got to go to Juilliard and hang out with him and, you know, um, and then, uh, and I, you know, I met him a couple times, but, uh, and we, so we became friends, we, we hit it off really well, but then, uh, and I was hoping to have a long friendship with him, you know, and then suddenly he died a couple years ago, um, a heart attack, and so it's a sad, sad situation, but uh, anyway, I wrote this tune as, uh, in honor of him, it's got just, I don't have a title for it yet, but it's for Frank, so I'll, maybe I'll give them a minute to come back. Have you, heard of, have you heard of Dan Shirley? I'm sorry? The Dan Shirley, the, uh, the uh, African-American who kind of jazz was off classical music, which I didn't think I was going to like. I've heard the name. There's a movie called The Green Book. Call him what? The Green Book. Green Book. Oh, yeah, yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I haven't seen it. I heard and about he, that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a music. Cheers, so dear. Hello. 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 Hello, Vladimir. Hello. Good to see you. Oh. Nice to see you too. No guitar this time. No guitar this time. We have we have a well, bunch better. Well, we, <laughs> we actually saw your uh, thing on you on uh, YouTube. You saw me on YouTube? Yep. Was I behaving myself? No, we, we said we're going to see the actual thing, so let's not watch this. <laughs> These harmonies that I'm playing? Yeah. yeah. This waltz was yeah. extremely complex. Yeah, it's, compl it's complex. It is. It's, it's what we call non-functional harmony. It's a, uh, uh, so there's functional harmony, which is what everybody's used to hearing the most, which is like, you know, standard harmony that most music is written in. And then there's non-functional harmony, which uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't stay within one, one key center. It, it can randomly move between key centers. In fact, there might, might not even really is a key center. Sometimes mm -hmm. it just goes from this harmony to this harmony, and um, and hopefully it resolves somewhere. And you know there are resolution points, but but it's uh, we call it non-functional harmony. So that song is pretty much non-functional harmony. It's like so, moods. Yeah, know? mood. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's more like a moods mm -hmm. of setting a mood. You know. It's yeah. amazing, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you can enter into that mood. Yeah. Yeah. It's so holding. Yeah, yeah. So that I mean, it's nice to actually. I, I, my comment is playing here with with all of you people is, I can hear, I can feel that people are listening. So it gives me energy to to feel like I can I can uh, reach for some things that I might not reach for if I'm playing at the hotel, say where it's you know it's noisy, it could be noisy or people you know. Talk, they keep talking. Yeah, it's, I mean, not it's not wrong, nothing wrong with that. It's fine. It's part of part of the situation. I, that doesn't really bother me most of the time, but. But, uh, but when people are listening in a focused way, it actually helps you um, reach inside yourself more, I think. And so I appreciate your, uh, your attention. Okay, this is for Frank Kimbrough. <laughs> 